Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Minecraft Disney World. This week we're headed back to the Magic Kingdom and we're going into Tomorrowland to take a look at the classic attraction Astro Orbiter. Now Astro Orbiter, like many of the attractions that I've covered so far, is an attraction that uh, exists in multiple Disney theme parks and this one in spe specifically exists in multiple forms and sort of transcends Disney as a whole and is a sort of ride design that you see used in theme parks all around the world. Now Astro Orbiter is essentially the same ride design as Dumbo or Aladdin's flying carpet. It is um, a bunch of seats that you get in that um, rotate around a central point and then you are given access to the controls to go either up or down and elevate yourself. Uh, and it does that for a couple of minutes and then it settles down. It's a nice family friendly ride. It's unless you have like a, an extreme fear of heights, it's probably a safe ride to go on and it's extremely popular. Just, you know, uh, evidenced by the fact that there are, you know, now four versions of it in Disney World. You've got the two Dumbos, the Aladdin's Magic Carpet and Astro Orbiter. And you have, you know, Dumbo and Astro Orbiter and multiple other Disney parks. And, you know, you see other variations in other parks around the world. Now, uh, like many of the attractions at Disney World, its roots sort of come from Disneyland. In 1956, um, it opened up in Disneyland and it was known as Astro Jets. Uh, they went around in the circle. Uh, it was about 50 feet and you could go upwards of 36 feet. Now, they changed the name from Astro Jets to Tomorrowland Jets in 1964, and the reason for that was that United Airlines, who was sponsoring the Tiki Room, uh, thought that the name was um, advertising for America Airlines, who had a coast-to-coast um, -coast service that they were calling Astro Jet. So they thought Astro Jets, Astro Jet, it was, like free it was like free advertising for the competition. So they changed it to Tomorrowland Jets, um, but that only lasted for two years because then they closed down the attraction to do renovations because they were going to do a new renovated Tomorrowland. So it opened up again in uh, August of 1967, and at that point it was called Rocket Jets. Um, and they had moved it, so it wasn't on the ground floor anymore. They had put it on top of the People Mover platform. The People Mover was also known today as the Tomorrowland Transit Authority here in Disney World, um, which I've done a video on in the past. Um, and you took an elevator to go up to the top floor, and then you would ride around it. This is actually how it's designed in Disney World today. Um, and the center point of the ride of this new version was a Saturn V rocket, which is the rocket that NASA used to go to the moon during the Apollo program. Now, it stayed like this until 1997, and then it closed down, and they renovated Tomorrowland yet again, uh, and then it was reopened as Astro Orbiter. However, because the new attraction was so heavy, they had to take it off of the top of the uh, People Mover platform, and they moved it to the entrance of Tomorrowland and was put it on the ground level, which is where it lives today, I believe. Um, now, there are versions of this in all the other parks. There's one in Tokyo, there's one in Paris, there's one in Hong Kong. They go by different names, but they're essentially the same ride, uh, all usually based on one of the others. Um, but here in the Magic Kingdom, uh, in 1974, so a couple of years after the park opened, uh, they opened, uh, I think at the time it was called Star Jets, and it was essentially the same ride. Um, it was on top of the Wedway People Mover, and it was during a massive expansion of Tomorrowland. At the time, they were adding the Star Jets, they were adding Space Mountain, they needed space for Carousel of Progress, and the People Mover. So they put it on there, and because of the location of the Wedway People Mover, that sort of became the center point of Tomorrowland, and also because it was the tallest part of it at the time, it sort of was like the iconic part of the Tomorrowland, at least until, you know, Space Mountain would eventually become sort of the icon for the, the area of the park. Uh, like the Disneyland version, in 1994, it was redesigned and reopened, and at that point it had taken on the name we know today, uh, Astro Orbiter, and it was also part of, you know, another renovation of Tomorrowland. Uh, they replaced the centerpieces with this really uh, stylized ironwork tower that you see today. It's got a very 1950s retro futuristic aesthetic to it. Sometimes um, I think you could attribute it to like the Jetsons. It looks very similar to that. Um, and they added these, these rotating planets so it would feel like you were flying around them when you were going on the attraction. 
Um, just some little fun facts. The It goes um, around 11 rotations a minute. And at that speed, it averages 1.2 million miles a year, uh, just based on how much the ride is being uh, used. Now, it's a great place to get, like, a cool view of the castle at night. If you really time it well, you could, like, watch the fireworks while you're going around on it. Um, I've personally gone on it during parades and seen the parade floats going through the hub in Magic Kingdom while going around. It's just a great view overall. And I think having the highly stylized um, centerpiece with, like, the vivid colors really like highlights what Tomorrowland has become where, you know, it was a part of the park that used to be about the future. It used to be about what we were going to do in the future and what the future would be like. But sort of like what we're seeing with Epcot today, it's expensive to keep up with that because the future comes and it's either not what we expected or it's different. Um, so what Tomorrowland eventually became was what we thought the future would have been like in the past. It's more like a love letter to, um, you know, what we predicted. And so you've got this really stylized and and beautiful aesthetic from the 50s. Like I said, the Jetsons were a great example of that, of just what we thought it would be like. Um, and it's just a great, it's a great time. Um, now, I'm not going to say it's a ride you have to go on, especially, like I said, it's Dumbo, it's the Aladdin uh, Magic Carpet. If you've been on any of them, you sort of know what it's like i would say i'm a little biased and say astro orbiter is the one you want to go on out of all of those i mean dumbo is definitely a classic but you've got that elevation that added elevation of being on top of the um, tta and then you've just got that amazing view and i think you've got all the great aesthetics of that centerpiece you know certainly i don't think dumbo's um centerpiece or or aladdin's um comes close to the the quality of the centerpiece in Astro Orbiter. In any case, that's a short look at a classic attraction. Um, I hope you have a great week. Whatever you're doing, make the most of it. And I hope you join me next week when I take another attraction from the MC Magic Walt Disney World recreation and talk about its history here on Minecraft Disney World. Bye, everyone.